What happens when you get cancer, lose your job, navigate a pandemic, and move to a different country all in the span of a year? You're about to find out. But first, a little context. As of 2019, I was living in the San Francisco Peninsula with my husband, where we had been for 25 years. I was an HR executive with a house in the suburbs and just trying to keep up with the pace of life. Our kids were grown and moved out of state and everything seemed pretty normal. But in September of 2019, at the age of 52, I was diagnosed with stage one ovarian cancer. After a big surgery and five grueling months of chemo and with the pandemic really kicking in, I got laid off. My husband Dan and I had been planning to retire early, but we were targeting an already aggressive 57 or 58. Could we do it sooner? Could we do it at 52? The short story is yes. We have our moving pod coming today, packing up tomorrow, and then the pod drives away on Friday, and we drive away on Saturday. With some changes to our lifestyle and dialing back a bit on our extensive travel plans, we made the decision to leave our comfortable suburban Silicon Valley lifestyle, get rid of almost everything we own, and rent out the home we lived and raised our family in for over 25 years. We packed up what little we decided to keep and left life as we knew it behind. Our ultimate destination was a small town in Mexico, but with the pandemic getting worse and worse, we had to find temporary living arrangements with family in Washington State. From May through August of 2020, we hunkered down in place where we could be close to our adult children and to the bulk of our family. September brought eased travel restrictions and an open door for us to make a run for the border and then some. I'm sure it appeared to some people that we were running from something, Most people, especially those closest to us, were very supportive, but some people were shocked and didn't understand why we were doing this. The next two and a half years were cathartic and taught us a lot about ourselves and about the world. It taught us that with a little planning, we can live without running water for a while. That the things we thought were so important to our comfort and identity ultimately meant little to nothing that unraveling from 30 years of career in raising children takes more than a few weeks. That bird watching is a lot more entertaining than you might think. That there's very little that a really good taco can't fix. That great new friendships can be made, even in your 50s. That you actually can get used to iguanas roaming through your yard like squirrels that we are capable of so much more than we realized. There were many ways that we had to change to live in this new environment and with this totally new day-to-day life we chose. But some changes stuck with me. Even after we moved to Washington State a couple of years later, they're still with me. First, I don't wanna have a lot of things to deal with. For instance, I don't really need or even want a closet full of shoes and clothes. I like nice things, and I still like new things sometimes, but the thought of amassing much more than a couple of drawers full, or a few feet of hanging things, and more than 10 pairs of shoes makes me feel tied down, too anchored by things, and the feeling of having to make too many decisions every day. Which brings me to the second way that I've changed. Simplicity often equals peace. I emerged from a life that created overwhelming decision-making fatigue and don't ever want to go back to that if I don't have to. There are very few decisions to be made each day when you're living on a beach and not working every day. I still actively craft my life so that my decisions are as few and easy as possible. This doesn't mean that I don't like to have any choices. It just means that I limit my decision-making to things that I actually care about and let go of the rest. The third way I changed is that I'm not nearly as afraid of spiders as I used to be. Now, this sounds like a little thing, but it was something I actively had to adapt to in Mexico, and I like not being afraid of things, so I've hung on to it back here in the States. I now understand that I can overcome just about every fear I have, 
except for scorpions. I still fear scorpions. The fourth way I've changed is that I have grown to appreciate true innovation. I'm not talking just about the Silicon Valley kind of innovation, but the kind where you have limited resources and a problem to solve, and you just figure it out. The Mexican people taught me that. That, my friends, is innovation born from necessity, and it's beautiful. The fifth and biggest change was one I actually anticipated. I first read about it in a book I read before we made the decision to leave called Why We Left. And it was a woman talking about how living in a small Mexican village forced her to pay attention to every step she took. I read that and knew immediately it was something I wanted and needed. It is a literal necessity when walking anywhere in a small Mexican village. There are rarely sidewalks, and if there are, they're chewed up by time and wear and very rarely fixed. The roads are the same. You have to watch where you put your next step, or you will end up either twisting an ankle, falling, or stepping in something you really don't want to step in. And while I know that doesn't sound life-changing, what it did was help me shift my brain off of autopilot and become mindful and intentional about how I move about the world. My brain was rewired to pay attention, to notice, and to make decisions with more clarity and purpose. I know that my capacity to adjust, grow, and change based on what life sends my way is much stronger and bigger than I originally thought. And I also know that I can find joy and happiness in almost any situation, as long as I keep paying attention.